Sanki, now I'm going to have a conversation. I'm going to have a conversation now about the rest of you, but having set that broad framework, Margaret was able to use other broad techniques incorporating the carnival. Some of these techniques are things that we are very familiar with because one of the things that she identified that Professor Lamin did in his book, even consciously or unconsciously, was that he used the voice of the other to portray the, the resistance to the domination through everyday simple acts in what she called the continuous cycle of life. So, within the continuous cycle of life, there was a resistance redefining the boundaries. And Margaret, using the text, went to an example where some young boys step out of their turf, turf so to speak, because the step out of the village of Creighton, went in to the, uh, the boundaries, they transgressed the boundaries, they saw a white man in a white suit at a bus stop and attempted to sell this white man as Paul Paul. <laughs> Here again, we put in upon the whole notion of language, how Barbadians in the creolizing way of using language and expressing the answer combine two sexes, Paul Paul. Now, in terms of how now this fun pop story played out, <laughs> the young boy trying to sell the white man. Obviously, he refused because he why these young boys is an affront in the first place, so they try to mess in the boundary, which Margaret identified very clearly in, in, in her understanding of the text in the castle of my skin. These young boys you now start to push the pop in the white man's face, and they never tell what happened. <laughs> They mess in the white man's face. <laughs> and what happened after that? Well, obviously the young boys take off. But in terms of creating and interpreting their own realities, some of the boys that saw it went to the whole question of popular culture as we know it today. Now, in the, in the interview, Margaret did that valuable interview, which is in the back of the book with Professor Lamy. He was making the claim that at that time, the development of Calypso wasn't very strong in Barbados. And he was saying that we based a lot of our rhythm, because rhythm was part of the continuous cycle of life, on the hymn in terms of how we use it. And these young boys that witnessed the whole event with the white man started to do a little chant. Look, look at what Paul Pop do. Look at what Paul Pop do. <laughs> So, yeah, Calypso. So, one of the things that is happening is that Margaret is continuously unearthing, unearthing the voice and the ways and resistance and trying to dress in authority and that perpetual colonial order that wanted to keep separation between race and class. And that's just about one of the examples that she was using. Now, then one of the within the whole question of looking at the body, Margaret looked at the whole question of violence and violence bodies. And this is trying to dress not only into the whole question of the carnival, but to the sexes when she looked at gender, and to parenting, and to education, how violence in itself was a feature within this whole notion of this brilliant book that was written 60 years ago, and how Professor Lamin captured it. And he didn't do it by the official, but he did it quite subtly in a lot of uh, creative literature techniques. And these literature techniques are very complex, and they really for them. I say Joyce the earlier from that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what I would say here is that Margaret was very brilliant in using the concept of calypso, in as much as Professor Lamin said no. She was able to identify that one of the things that Calypso did, and I call Gabby today to get an example, is how we use the oral tradition, the true folk, to uh, scandal, not scandalize, not necessary to bad talk, but to show resistance. And I was asking, you give me an example of a Calypso that did that really well. And as I was speaking to him, I said, well, Jack, yes. you know? <laughs> you know? How, yes. how we transgress the authority, we put it in the oral tradition, we use the 
language that we're, we're confident, that leash is mine. So here again, the whole question of how Margaret was able to use the technique of Canada to draw not what George has to say and how it is still relevant 60 years older. And as George has said, it has resonance. It continues to resonate with every facet of our life. Then, sorry, we came very short. Margaret is prompting me. <laughs> oh, in terms of the, I don't remember, but Margaret will have me here, and I was thinking of Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. No, Walker. Walker, because what Margaret was arguing, even if we use hymns, hymns was always used in. It had a place for everything. Well, I'm not somebody who want to pray for you, you got to really ask yourself for that And people um, can test each other with things. So if somebody did something, so Mary has a lovely story that she did with them that she would share with you. Yes, I, I wanted to, sorry. <laughs> this is a really wonderful story. I, because I had that theory about, I'm disagreeing with, with, with Professor Lambert that we had Calypso. I mean, I disagree with Professor Lambert is a serious thing, right? So I, I thought, no, I know even if we had the Anglican hymn, we did not use it only as a hymn, we used it as Calypso. So I called Tony Thompson on the radio, and I asked Tony Thompson, I tell, give him the thesis, right? And Tony Thompson tell me, of course, Tony said, I had two aunts, right? And one of these aunts was married, and the next aunt was not married. And when the two of them have noise, the aunt that was married used to sing all the married Anglicans <laughs> to tell her sister, you're not married. <laughs> and he tell me, so he's telling me this on the radio, and he said, and when, and when she finished, the, the sister would, she would listen, listen to her, and when she finished, she would open the window and sing all the burial hymns. <laughs> she was saying, married or not married, you can still sing. Professor Lavin, is that not true? Mama, Mama, people don't think it's a singing place. interact in continuous cycle of life, you have conflict, you have, um, have stereotype. They were contesting, not exchange, they were contesting what European idealized way of understanding the world, the marriage, the, and what was it. Within the book, one of the things that Margaret highlighted, when Professor Lamming questioned some of these highly moral fictitious um, stereotypes of whiteness. And one of them that not really covered it a lot in the literature, I'm listening to what I'm saying from what Margaret said because I told these things, is white on um, white sexual relations. And we read a lot about black and white sexual relations in terms of how the master has sexual relations with black men. But we didn't see the transition, the transgressions of these immoral acts as Margaret identified where we, when they were witnessed by us that we, they questioned this whole notion of the colonial order and the rupturing of it, that continuous rupturing. So one of the times is some of the young boys, you know, they were quote unquote peeking. Margaret called it the voyeuristic gates, nice message of words. And what they did what they witnessed was the overseer's daughter in the king room with a sailor. Unfortunately, these boys were in an aunt's nest. So, <laughs> so when the inevitable happened, they got caught. 
And what happened? In the, no, it never ever happened. This white woman's image had to be protected. So they were accused of rape. So these are the kind of things that show the domination, the oppression. No. So, I'm just checking the time. <laughs> so within the books, one of the things that's really good about Mary's book is how she makes the, the broadness, the total expression of creolization. Now in creolization, she had argued she, she has stated that rapid realization, although it was total, it did not include the use of technology. It stuck to language and body and so on. But what Margaret is arguing is that this realization has to move into technology. And technologies as rhythm that continues with the rhythms. And one of them that she identified very clearly was the whole question of the making of the drum, sorry, the steel pan, the blowing of the conch shell. And one of the things that was very important in this, this technology, it was consistent with the drum, which was sending message and meaning, and defying this colonial art, because we were putting an interpretation to our life continuously. And, and the last area that Margaret spent quite a lot of time on was the whole question of the violence in the village. There's an interesting story about two women and, and this story has a lot of multiple parts in it. These two ladies have the same Man. Man. <laughs> And within this interaction there was the conflict. And within the conflict came the violence. And with the violence was the fighting. And I think it was stop when the man was alive. On his death, <laughs> the two women could not agree that who was very good. And there was one big fight. But even within that, what Margaret identified that Professor Langman did was he demonstrated that this violence continues. And Margaret then went to our more modern, sorry, not more modern, our recent writers on resistance and rebellion. And Dr. Brown here was one of the people that she quoted. And she was saying, and he was saying that we have to see this white and panel. Brown, she linked Brown and Panel together. It just shows how our academics are using our own people on the diaspora and at home. And Margaret was making the point that Brown, both Brown and Pannon say that sometimes we have to see this violence not only in a negative light, in and as the outcome of the colonial outpouring of violence, but it's also almost like a preparation for the violence that you have to do against the state. So it, the book is rich in using the things that we are comfortable with in a continuous cycle of life. And that is one, those are but the few of the things that I was able to tell about the book. And I want to say thank you.